whole sequence was stabilized using Dryerflow. Is it an actual good tool or is it too good to be true to stabilize just shaky handheld footage? What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Luca. If you're new here, we're talking about all things filmmaking and cinematography. So if you find this video interesting, please do consider subscribing below. With that said, let's get into today's video, which is about Gyroflow. Yes, I am reading my notes. Let's start right off from the actual software. What is Gyroflow? I actually came across this software uh, maybe six or seven months ago when I started FPV because it is one of the most famous software to stabilize FPV footage. And back then I didn't want to spend hundred dollars on real study from GoPro. So I just tried it out, but I didn't really like the way it looked at least for FPV footage. So I kind of just left it aside. And then last week I came across this video from Brandon Lee where he used a new update from Gyroflow 15. Point one, I think it is and basically they finally support Sony's and mirrorless cameras like red and black magic Which is a huge update in my opinion, but is it actually any good in his video that I'm gonna link up here? I think what it does pretty much just bounces around with his Sony camera films a bunch of stuff And then it shows you how perfectly stabilized that is and that is true that is very doable, but there is a few catches and that's why I decided to make this video because I think there is some things that need to be clarified and it's an insane tool, but I actually don't think it's that worth it. And let me explain you why. So there's a few ways you can use Gyroflow and the one that I chose is to install the DaVinci Resolve plugin. So it's included with the DaVinci software, let's say, and then you download the actual Gyroflow app which is free and then you just add the effect within the Vinci Resolve and then you can open in Gyroflow and play around, auto sync and it's very straightforward, there's a bunch of tutorials on that but it's super straightforward. Once you apply the plugin, you open in Gyroflow, auto sync and it's stabilized. That is pretty much it. As long as you are with a Sony A7S III, Blackmagic, Red, a couple of more Sony's. Not all cameras are supported yet but this one luckily is so I could try this out. So once you pick the camera that is going to be recognized inside the software, you have to pick the lens. And unfortunately for the lens that I have, which is a Sigma 24 to 70, there isn't an official lens transcode. So you're going to use the user one. So it's not hundred percent correct, but it's very close. So once you do that, that is your stabilization all done and you can export a file back into the Vinci. But there are a few catches. Probably the biggest catch is that to recognize the gyro data of a camera, and to be able to stabilize it within Gyroflow, you have to have every stabilization off on your camera. So you have to turn off steady shot from Sony, for example, which means that you have to specifically shoot this footage for Gyroflow. You can't just use old footage or you can't just shoot your normal footage and then go back. And if something is a little bit shaky, you put it in Gyroflow, you have to shoot it specifically for it, which is already, I think, a pretty big deal because what if Gyroflow doesn't work? You just throw away the footage. Like, I don't know, that's a bit of a catch for me. And then aside from that, like any software to stabilize footage in post, in post-production, you can't have motion blur, which means you can shoot like nice handheld 24 frames per second because it's just gonna look crazy blurry and it's just not gonna look good. You need to have a very high shutter speed to make this whole stabilization effect work. You have to shoot 24 frames per second at like 500 or 600 shutter speed, which you have zero motion blur. It looks very jittery. It's just over texture, the footage. So yes, you get very stable footage, but at what cost? Now there is a few work around that specific issue, which is using something like real steady motion blur, which pretty much reintroduces blur into your footage but then i feel like it's such a big workflow around there for such a small problem while if you want stable footage just use a gimbal or or make a heavy rig i always shoot handheld with a very heavy rig so that my micro movements don't really show in camera like do something like that and understand your camera for example sony 7s3 i totally recommend having steady shot on standard 
instead of active because active introduces so much wobble around the corners i find especially if you run it like handheld rig and stuff i just don't like the way it looks so there are a bit too many catches for gyroflow but i still think it's an amazing software i still think it's definitely worth your time if you specifically want to get a steady shot and you don't care about all of these factors for example i can think of using this if i'm in a situation where i know i want a very steady shot i know i have the tools to introduce blur in post-production and i know specifically that that one shot i need to shoot it for gyroflow but i will always make sure that i will also shoot a few shots with stabilization on and you know so that i have if gyroflow doesn't work i have something else makes sense so to sum this up today's video guys i do think that gyroflow it's an incredible tool and i am 100 percent sure these tools will get better and better throughout the years especially when it's such a crazy software and it's free that's that's a little mind blown for me that such crazy good software is free so definitely try it out and uh, let me know below if you have any more questions about gyroflow and uh, see you guys in the next video thank you for sticking around again that's it